Hi everyone. So today I'm sharing chapter four and chapter four is wait until you see my Gidget. And this is the chapter where um, I, even though I was trying not to think about another dog, um, it was really hard for me not to because I have such a huge love for dogs and wanted to bring another one into my life. And um, I didn't know how that was going to go with telling my husband, John. Um, I had already taken care of two special needs dachshunds. And um, I'm gonna, I'll share a little bit more in this chapter of what that all entails. Um, but I eventually do come across this adorable little dog, as is on the cover of my book, and just felt this amazing connection to her. So... Um, this is where I'm going to pick up in the excerpt for Wait Till You See My Gidgets. There were many beautiful experiences about having a dog with special needs, though it did also mean restrictions on our freedom. It's challenging to find someone to care for a dog who needs their bladder and bowels expressed, which limits the amount of time you can be away from home. If you wish to get away for an extended period, taking your disabled dog on vacation is usually the only option. One can certainly understand that this isn't for everyone. As I gave more thought to bringing yet another paralyzed pup into our life, there was a part of me that felt guilty. I knew in my heart that if John had his way, we wouldn't have another one. Yet I couldn't deny that taking care of a special needs dog fulfilled me in a way that nothing else seemed to do. After an admittedly short tug of war between mind and heart, my heart won out and I began searching the internet for another paralyzed doxy. I didn't tell John I was looking. I knew I'd eventually have to tell him and I hoped and prayed he would be okay with it. 14 days before we were to leave on vacation, I found my next dachshund on petfinder.com. Her name was Gidget and she was quite unusual looking with gray, white and brown fur that bore a pattern of markings known as dapple. At only 10 pounds, she was, she was also tinier than my previous doxies. What drew me most, however, was her wise, sweet, petite face. I then clicked on the video footage shot by the rescue organization and was immediately smitten with her quirky, spunky, and charismatic personality. It came shining through in the short film. From what I could tell, it appeared that Gidget did not need a wheelchair. Instead, she had this endearing, wobbly walk. I wasn't sure how I felt about that as I was hoping to put good use to the wheelchair that had been Frankie's and then Joey's. Then again, it really didn't matter because I was already head over heels in love. I knew from experience that I was feeling the same hard connection with Gidget that I had shared with Frankie and Joey. But what to do? The timing wasn't right. We were supposed to be gone for 10 days. Having walked this journey before, I knew the key lay in trusting that if something is meant to be, it will happen. This isn't always easy, of course, and as we prepared for our departure to Asheville, I prayed that Gidget would still be available in 10 days. So um, this chapter does go on that, you know, I did, um, we did end up going on our vacation, and um, I did hold out until the end of our vacation when I do present John with the news um, and share a video with him of that I had watched of Gidget. And um, I'm, I'm looking here at the book. Oh, after I shared the, the video with him, he said, so is she the one? And um, I did have his blessing, and um, when we got home, I do do um, start to put the steps in motion to adopt Gidget. So the next chapter I'll be sharing with you, the next ex excerpt is gonna be from chapter five called Obstacles. So I hope to see you there tomorrow as I share that chapter. All right, thanks again for everyone for tuning in.